Hello to all my buddies, it's Papa. Today we're going to talk about um, something other than rocks. We're going to talk about Joro spiders in the year 2022. That's right now. I'm going to show you what the Joro spiders look like here in the Joro zone. Uh, I'm going to tell you what the Joro zone is and I'm going to tell you how how to get rid of these spiders when they're tiny right now so that later on you don't have to deal with them. So, and I'm going to um, tell you also about why we kill these Joro spiders and whether they do or don't uh, displace our native species. So stay tuned and if this video is good to you, please subscribe to the channel. It helps me immensely. And uh, so here we go, Joro spiders 2022. So what is the Joro epicenter? This is it. It centers around an area just east of Athens, Georgia. That's where they were first discovered. From the Joro epicenter, they've been expanding each growing season. And this is probably what the Joro zone looks like now, or it will be very soon. So how are these Joro spiders spreading? Well, let me show you. This Reddit image shows how the Joral spiders uh, travel along the power lines along the roadways and, and do hopscotch between the wires. The space between the power lines is ideal for their nests uh, space-wise and there are plenty of insects there too. In early spring, once the uh, spider Joral spider eggs hatch out, you've got thousands of tiny baby Joros and they cast their uh, a line of filament up and it, the wind catches it and so they spread downwind much faster than they do upwind here the prevailing wind is from the west so areas east of the athens georgia area are probably uh, expanding faster than those to the west it's june 21 the year 2022 and here's what the baby jorals look like right now they're quite small, and here's my hand for perspective to show you how small they are right now. Quite tiny. Hard to see. So I just finished going around the outside of the lawn outside the minimalist cottage, and in 15 minutes I smacked 73 baby Joros. And there's probably 25 or 30 in that cedar tree right there, but this is the yard Just going around here around the edge and in the flower bed 73 and 15 minutes With the fly swatter. They're so easy to kill and every one that I killed means I won't have to mess with a gigantic one in uh, September or October and though they won't be laying eggs to produce thousands more joy best tool that at your disposal is a fly swatter. Uh, one good smack of the fly swatter will knock them down and kill them. You can also use your bare hands, they're so small. I'll show you. And to kill them with your bare hands, you just smack them. You can wear gloves if you need to, but I don't wear gloves, and they're so small, no poison or nasty stuff gets on you. You just wash your hands when you're done. And of course, last year in my other videos, I recommended using spray to spray them, but now we're not using spray. Grammy and I are using the fly swatter when they're small and the handy dandy badminton racket when they get big. Uh, you've seen this before in other videos. This works great when they get about an inch long. Now a lot of folks say that Joros aren't a problem and they're harmless, but I completely disagree and I'll give you a comparison. Joro spiders are exotics. That means they come from a different continent or country. That's an invasive exotic species. Cockroaches also are 
an exotic invasive species from another country or continent. We have native species of cockroach, but the house cockroach comes to us from somewhere else. Um, Juro spiders have been claimed to be harmless, even though I have talked to folks who have been bitten uh, and who were allergic to their bite and uh, had to deal with some pain and some swelling there. Cockroaches also are harmless. They don't bite people at all. It's true that cockroaches can carry bacteria, but uh, I have never used a pest control company on um, any of my houses, and I've dealt with many cockroaches in, during my life, and I've never gotten any kind of disease from them. But it is something to consider. Why should we kill cockroaches? What if you just had one cockroach in your house, would you kill him? No, you might name him Bobby Joe and make a pet of him. If you had one Joro spider on your property, you might um, name him Bobby Joe and make a pet of him. How many is too many? Well, cockroaches can rapidly multiply and you can have hundreds of them in your house. I don't know if you've ever had the uh, hair raising experience of coming into your kitchen uh, after you've gone to bed, you flip on the light and like a dozen cockroaches scuttle off your countertop. I've had that experience and people have to deal with and fight cockroaches every day. Everyone who lives in a house, virtually everyone, pays exterminating companies to spray those houses regularly to kill, guess what, among other things, cockroaches. We hate cockroaches because we don't like to see them scuttling around on our counters and we don't like to see them, their poop in the morning. Well, for those of us who are in the Joro zone, if you've ever been walking on your property and walked face first right into a Joro web and got covered with it, that's pretty much of a nuisance that's at least on the level of the nuisance of cockroaches. And just for reference, Grammy and I killed way over a thousand very large Joro spiders in their very large nests last season here on six and a half acres. There were probably a thousand more that we missed. So if it's okay to kill cockroaches, as we all do, a harmless exotic species, then it's very okay also to kill Joro spiders. Now, scientists don't know if Joros are going to compete, outcompete our native species, but just using logic and the concept of carrying capacity. Carrying capacity means how much resources per acre are out there for a specific species. Let's just say spiders. Um, let's say there's 10 units of carrying capacity out there right now. <laughs> Uh, insects and places to hang your nest and there's eight spiders occupying those ten nests well that those two empty um, habitats pieces of habitat will not remain unoccupied native species will eventually go into there uh, because that's just the way that wildlife does that's how wildlife expands now introduce a thousand Joro spiders into that scenario but there's still only 10 units of carrying capacity in there the Joro spiders don't have to deal with diseases that our native spiders deal with they don't have to deal with the predators that our native spiders deal with do you think that some of those 10 units maybe all of those 10 units of carrying capacity are going to be taken by the Joros there's wave after wave of Joros coming. It's like the uh, hordes of Attila the Hun or the Mongols. Think about Neanderthal. Neanderthals occupied Western Europe for tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of years before we humans, we Cro-Magnons came. And they fully occupied the habitat for their lifestyle, which was hunter, hunting and gathering in the um, uh, Ice Age type environment and 
uh, the post ice age type environment. Well, humans went up there and there's just X amount of carrying capacity up there. What happened? The humans interbred to some extent with the Neanderthals, but the bottom line is the Neanderthals disappeared because the Cro Magnons had resources that the Neanderthals didn't do. There's no reason to think that Jorals will not do the same thing here. If you want to understand carrying capacity in wildlife management, which includes uh, insect populations, <laughs> read books by uh, and articles by Aldo Leopold. He was one of the early wildlife biologists who actually developed um, the concept of carrying capacity and put it on a mathematical basis. Uh, he also uh, elucidated the boom and bust kind of cycles that happen with uh, all species, including humans. All right, my good buddies, that's the scoop on getting the baby Joros now before they get too big. And I hope I've reasonably and logically uh, replied to and answered some of the folks who feel uh, like it's wrong or bad to uh, kill these Joros spiders. Do, do I want to, do I get a thrill from going out there and killing Joros? No, I don't. I've devoted my entire life and career to the natural resources, uh, including the, the animals, insects, and arachnids too. Uh, but you have to do what you have to do uh, to protect your family, uh, and that covers cockroaches and joro spiders. So you guys have a great summer, and uh, this is Papa saying happy hunting, in this case, joro. <laughs>